nice day out here today. I think it's 57. I found this snowblower in the garbage last, last year. And it's uh, 11 horsepower Tecumseh. And uh, it was seized when I got it. It's like brand new. I think the guy ran it with no oil in it. And it was in a rich neighborhood in Sarnia with a manual and an electric starter motor on the side. And I got it going. Uh, I got it, it worked three times. We had three good snowfalls. I used it for that. And then it seized up again. I knew it would. Uh, and I'm sure it's the, the main, uh, it's a connecting rod on the main bearing. Usually with a little bit of aluminum gets transferred onto the steel crankshaft burrs it and then just locks it right up and I'm sure that's what it is so I'm going to pull this apart today order the part okay got my garage all rearranged Rhea. again got all the uh, tables and chairs out got the snowblower on can't do much with the Norton right now until the parts come in so I'm going to uh, tackle this found it in the garbage and uh, uh, the, the crank seized, I know what it is. So I'm going to pull the motor off and we'll get into that engine. Hopefully I can just replace the rod and a couple gaskets and that'll be it. That's probably, this is probably about an $1,100 uh, snow machine. I think they're on for like $10.99 and it, it's like new. Like I said, I only used it three times last year. You can see all the paints on the inside still, so, you know, it's in good shape. <clears throat> used it three, three times last year before it really seized up. It's a Craftsman snowblower. Really easy to take the motor out. Just three bolts on this side and three on the opposite side. Slide the belts off. Uh, take the belt cover off. Right there, there's only two bolts holding that in. And uh, I think these were three half inch bolts there and those were uh, three eighths. And that's it, really just uh, a couple minutes. I, I think that took me maybe not even 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes. So the main thing I want to get at here is, uh, I want to get at that rod. So I'm going to be pulling this apart here. First thing, pull off the drain plug. Get all the oil out of it, because when you pull that cover off, oil's going to be everywhere. Because we want to pull off this, uh, this engine cover. And uh, I believe there's a gear reduction in here. I'm surprised that turns over because that didn't. I think the rod let right go this time. Anyways, we'll get it out. Just pull the, the pulleys off, which uh, maybe it is the end of the crank. I, I thought there was a gear reduction here because it's so big, but we'll find out. And. Uh, just pulling these two pulleys off. Oh, there we go. Just always have a look when you take something off to make sure you know which way it goes back on. And if you look at this pulley, the boss here and the boss here, they're they're pretty much even. Oops, I'm sorry, the boss here and that boss. They're, they're pretty much exactly even spacing either way. So I don't think I can screw that up. I think I can stick it on that way or that way and it's not gonna make a difference. But I'll put it face down, put that one face down, like that, put the bolt back in. There's a spacer too, huh? don't forget the spacer. Okay, the oil's just about drained out. Let me take that cover off. We're going to have to take the oil dipstick off to get out that bolt in behind there. To get the dipstick off, I've got to take this cover off, the shroud here around the carburetor and the I think that's a carburetor on the other side. Yeah, there's the carburetor and the exhaust. Then I can get out all these bolts. Get this cover off, undo these two screws, pull the key out, pull this, the uh, idle control valve, another screw here, another one up there. Whoops, can you see that? One there, one there. There's four of them there that got to come out, and then that shroud should come off. Taking this bolt off too. So 
just so I can get the exhaust off. The exhaust cover off to get at this screw a little bit better, a little bit easier to work on. This little clamp. This pops off. Trying to get one here. And then the dipstick just threads out. Now I can get at all these bolts. Get a lot of snow here. Usually, only three or four times a season. Got to shovel the driveway. But they're saying we're supposed to get a lot of snow this year. That's it. Well, the, uh, the governor is through this outer cover, so i got to pop this off. And this is always tricky to line up when I put it back together. should try to mark it first, I guess. Oh, this, this screw is the adjustable for the governor. That'll be okay. Should come out. There's a little block right here in this corner. It's a nice solid block, and uh, that's a good place to hit it with the chisel. Down because oil's gonna leak out. Running out of bench. Put some stuff over here. This over here. Here's the connecting rod, <laughs> right here. It's broken. So, as long as I can save the crank, we're gonna find out in a minute. If I can save the crank, polish it up, 
usually they're aluminum connecting rods and then a steel crank and usually just the aluminum is burred on the end of the crank I can clean it up and save it we'll see if I can when I go to put this back together I'm gonna to pull it this is the camshaft here I'm gonna pull the cam out there's uh, there's the mark mark right there right in between those two teeth and then the crank I just saw it right there there's the dot on the, the one tooth Two, one tooth fits in between these two I just pull the, the camshaft out two lifters they fall down there's the end of the broken the broken rod it actually uh, sheared the uh, bolt off as well too so gonna have to get a new bolt uh, the only way to get this crankshaft is crankshaft out is to I got to pull the uh, recoil off and the flywheel off and then I can pull this right out and have a look at the journal that's next flywheel where are we here yeah there's three three half inch or four altogether I think I already had one yeah I had one out, I had one out for the exhaust one more in this cover one more down here one more down at the bottom those are all three half inch uh, nuts on the end of those bolts and then you got to take the throttle off two Phillips screws right here take that off got to disconnect the, the primer bulb it's this uh, little hose right in here it's on the end of the carb pull that off now we're ready pull the flywheel off first got to take the nut off in this cover 15 16 socket have an impact gun you can always put a socket on there and give it a good whack with a hammer it'll come off now tricky part to getting uh, I'm, gonna turn this off. I'm gonna pull this flywheel off there's a trick to it but not see the, the flywheel keys right there just keep that in mind put this right back on until it's just about flush you, you want to put the pressure on the nut. I'm going to pry opposite opposite the flywheel key. So I'm going to pry over on this side of the uh, of the flywheel. I'm going to pry it with a pry bar. Hit with a hammer here. It should pop off. I spun the flywheel around so I can put some leverage here. I just I need to, one person to hold the motor. I don't have anybody. So the flywheel key is right here. So I'm prying on this side. Let's see if I can get it. There it goes. I didn't set that up either. That just comes off like that. Always pry opposite side. Pry on this side. Opposite side of the flywheel key. It'll come off for you. When that crank came out I noticed the uh, the key was still in there but it looks sheared off so I'm looking at the end of the crank here and that sheared off now I thought it did that when I got this last year I thought that key was sheared in there but uh, so I put a new key and that's nothing You can see in here the grooves all cut into there. I don't know if I can save this one. 
I don't think so. I'm gonna try to polish that up a bit, but uh, this crank might be done. Oh uh, boy, let me see if I can polish it up. There's some pretty deep grooves in there. Uh, I already I priced a rod last winter, and uh, I can get a rod for like 11, 12 bucks US. I'm, I'm gonna go see if I can find a crank on there, maybe a good used crank. And. Uh, that's there's some deep grooves in there that's too bad I should have left it last winter not used it I'm just trying to pull the piston out <laughs> but the vacuum is so tight it kept popping back up so I gotta take the spark plug out to let the vacuum out to get that piston out. there we go pistons a nice shape that's good, that's a nice shape. I can change the rod here and, and, and shove it back in from the bottom and not have to take anything else apart. So the rod's done. Okay, let me go look up some parts. For me, time I put this motor into the garage, up on the hoist, pulled the motor out, got this all apart, it, it hasn't been 45 minutes. And if I had the parts, I could put it back together and be running in 45 minutes, but I gotta go order the parts.